Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about multiple storm complexes bringing damaging winds, some hail, and flooding. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Good morning, everyone. This is your June 6th Sunday update. If you could do me a favor, can you leave a comment down below? I'd love to hear where you watch PAL from. So let me know what city you watch PAL from across the U.S. I'd love to hear from you and definitely leave your uh, comments below. I appreciate it. So let's get right to it. Uh, what we're looking at here, man, we've been dealing with this upper level low that's been parked out over West Texas. And out ahead of it on the east side here, we'll be dealing with that abundance of moisture would be swinging in from the southwest, pulling in that Gulf moisture. It's been bringing a lot of heavier rain from much of Texas, much of Louisiana, and parts of the southeast. And looking ahead, as this ridge of high pressure will slowly shift off further to the uh, east here, on the back side, we are going to be dealing with some stronger storm complexes that we have as we have a trough that's going to be digging in from the north, and that's going to be setting the stage from some severe weather uh, to the north uh, for these areas up, up uh, in our northern areas. So as we look at some of the watcher, watches and warnings for this morning, yes, that ridge of high pressure has been pretty dominant over much of the west. We've been hit with excessive heat warnings just in the last several days. It's still going to be the, be the uh, culprit today. You know, down to the south, they've been dealing with those heavier rains. That's where they have those flash flood watches from much of the south into southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, parts of southern Alabama, and that's going to continue. You can see the ridge will slowly shift off further to the e further to the east, and we're already seeing isolated pockets of heat advisories uh, today, and that will just expand as we go through. Uh, early next week. And let's just take a look at some of the rainfall amounts just that fell just in the last three days. This is through uh, June 6 here at eight o'clock. In the last 72 hours, you can definitely see, yes, we've had some isolated showers on the backside where that ridge is kind of losing its luster. But a lot of the heavier rains has been well to the south and you can almost draw a line here across in much of Texas. And down here, I've kind of highlighted a bullseye just south of the Lake Charles, uh, Louisiana area. This area has picked up 13 inches of rain just in the last several days alone as some of these heavier rain amounts. And this area up here around North Texas last night, this rain fell just in the four hour time span where they had numerous high water rescues uh, for North Dallas area. That was... Uh, uh, it, a flooding event that just transpired over a setup with that upper level low and that it, that rain of six inches just fell in a four hour time span uh you know in late after later uh, in later into the evening into the overnight last night in in uh, north texas but today they're still gonna have to be dealing with that upper level low that's going to be dealing you know coming across it's going to be trying to slowly lift off further off to the northeast that's going to bring in some daytime heating thunderstorms, some isolated, uh, stronger storms. And that's why the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted a marginal risk for severe weather in much of Dallas and to Fort Worth. And out ahead of it, where that upper level low into New Orleans, uh, there are going to be seeing some isolated pockets of some stronger storms for them. Here's the radar depiction as we go into your four o'clock afternoon, you know, this afternoon. Yeah, this pesky upper level low will still be around. And as this swings across, uh, we'll still have to be dealing with some pop-up daytime heating afternoon thunderstorms in much of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. This will slowly try to lift off to the northeast. But when that does, that opens the door for the northwest flow setup. And we have to start looking out west where the storms start refiring out, out to the dry line in much of the Colorado Rockies and over uh, New Mexico. That will shift east as we go into the nighttime hours, as we go into the overnight hours and uh, back into uh, much of North Texas because we have a strong, that mesoscale convective system will be moving across and looks like it may impact the Dallas Worth area by the time we have daybreak uh, tomorrow, after, tomorrow morning with uh, damaging winds, some small hail, and yes, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted an isolated tornado threat within this region of a small spin up ahead of that main line with these stronger storms that are gonna be coming in. 
and and uh, the the storm the the weather prediction center has highlighted a slight risk with the combination of all that for excessive rainfall again for much of north texas and out ahead of this well we do have that upper level low much of louisiana much of mississippi much of the parts of uh you know alabama here are going to be under that excessive rain amounts that could be inundated over these areas just today alone going into monday so as we go into the day on monday we still have multiple mesoscale complexes going to be impacting north texas with some marginal risk for some severe storms but to the north we have to turn our attention to as this ridge will slowly start shifting further off to the east on the back side we do have a trough that's going to be able to enter back into the picture with some cooler air aloft and that's going to be setting the stage for some severe weather and this is like bismarck of all places the spot that hit 106 degrees just the other day shattering the record high by 11 degrees it was 31 degrees above average i mean the average high is 75 degrees would i mean 106 is that's some crazy stuff but now with that trough coming in they're gonna have to be dealing with that some severe weather and unfortunately some larger hail entering back the, back in the picture and that'll be that'll be in the day on a monday but as we go into the afternoon hours further to the south we have yet another mesoscale complex moving across north texas this could also bring some high winds some uh, some small hail to it the main impacts are going to be your damaging winds and your flooding rains with these areas that just been impacted day after day with heavier rains and that will continue into the afternoon hours and yes this uh, the weather prediction center has highlighted that slight risk for uh excessive rainfall for much of north texas and that mesoscale system will try to shift further off into the northeast so that'll be impacting more into arkansas getting into parts of missouri getting into parts of uh you know west western uh, tennessee and then it'll kind of fade into still excessive rainfall for parts of the southeast as we go into the day on a monday but like i mentioned as that trough will move across as the ridge will slowly start to shift a little bit further that allows more cooler air to enter the picture and unfortunately now we're gonna have to be dealing with some of that very large hail we're talking that you know, golf ball to you know up to tennis ball type size hail and a lot of these some of these areas to the north uh into uh, north dakota as well as parts of uh, montana and that'll be the day on uh on tuesday and then down below where we have that active just mesoscale system one after another again a more excessive rain for north texas this will slowly start to shift and in more into arkansas entering the picture more into western tennessee more into western kentucky uh start entering know northern areas of uh, mississippi as we go into the day on uh, tuesday but as we go into tuesday as far as we kind of expand the view here we can see this finally this this ridge tries to slowly start to build in as the more the rain will start to shift further off into the ohio valley more further into the east and more impacting more of the mid-atlantic states as we have this developing low to the north with some cooler air going to be entering back back in the picture as we go into the middle of the week we finally dry out in texas and oklahoma and much of kansas as this ridge will start to bring things just back to normal in texas we've been well above below average for an extended period of time and but this these rains will continue to shift a little bit further east but as we go into the day on a thursday like i mentioned as this ridge will continue to shift further east that will allow more cold air to enter the picture and look at this by the time we go into the morning hours on thursday morning the 10th yes we're talking areas could be looking at 20 and 25 degrees below average and these are spots in idaho that just hit 100 degrees so that's some very cold air and it could be cold enough in isolated spots in the higher elevations <laughs> yes we're talking snow in places that hit 100 degrees just the other day now we're talking snow in some of these spots in idaho and parts of montana as we have some colder air uh entering back in the picture for into the pacific northwest by the time we get to, into thursday 
But before that, man, yes, we're going to have to be still dealing with that very heavy rain that's going to be parked over North Texas, parked over eastern Oklahoma as that low will finally shift further off into the east. Now it'll be impacting areas into Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and western Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, Indiana as well, as it's been primarily dry under the ridge of high pressure. And on the backside, as that ridge moves away, we'll have storm complexes move across well to the north in Dakotas and parts of uh, Montana here, you know, as we go into the day on, uh, on, uh, throughout the week for your precipitation. But after the temp time frame, yes, we're going to have to be looking at the Caribbean. We're going to have to be looking at a storm complex, possibly, possibly a, a, a wave or a tropical storm or a tropical system going to be entering back into uh, the Gulf after the 10th time frame. So we'll be definitely have to be looking at that feature uh, that we highlighted uh, several, several days ago. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Definitely leave your comments below on where you watch Pal from. I'd love to hear from you out there. Uh, Stay with me where I protect you before and...